Hello everyone, we are here in EOSIO Swiss workshop number 15, entitled Building a Collaborative Culture on EOS. And I have the pleasure to be with Matthias Schönbeck, the founder of ZEOS Private Transaction on EOS. Thank you, Matthias, to be with us for the first time in EOSIO Swiss workshop. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you so much for having me and giving me the chance to talk a little bit about the project here. We have a rich menu. Uh, we will dive into the subject at the core of the things, but maybe first I want to let introduce yourself, how you came to EOS and finally at the start of ZEOS, and then we will move on into the, uh, then we will break down ZEOS. But first, maybe short story about uh, Matthias. Okay, uh, uh, thanks. Um, so yeah, long story, I guess. Uh, I, I, I'm in EOS basically since the beginning, but not really de uh, involved as a developer. Uh, I just joined basically uh, about what is it, almost two years ago, I guess. I joined the Vigor team, helped out a little bit there. Um, and then later I created EOS. The way I came up with the project idea is pretty much uh, I, so what I did the last four years, I was uh, working for a crypto space magazine, a German magazine uh, where I wrote about crypto, not only EOS, but uh, uh, you know all kinds of projects. The focus was also a lot on, on privacy because we, we thought that was one of the, most interesting trends uh, that we expected to come up at some point. And um, so I was following the EOS ecosystem also very closely and uh, with focus on privacy, of course, I was also uh, following PIOS, uh, the first privacy token on EOS, uh, which was, I think, created around 2019. Um, yeah, long story short, I think a lot of people who watch this are familiar with how this all went. Uh, the team went silent after a while. They they had some technical issues or requirements uh, to, to get their, their protocol really working on EOS. And I don't know, it was almost a year that the team was silent and, and I, I was wondering why no one was really picking up on the privacy stuff, especially uh, with uh, zero knowledge proof technology, because that was, at that point, it, it was already pretty clear that this was a much superior approach to the Monero privacy, which the PIOS team uh, was following back then. And so I, yeah, I don't know. I started to look into this because I was already following all these awesome privacy projects in, in the crypto space and um, found that very interesting. And um, yeah, so I started to deep dive into zero knowledge proof technology, how this all works, how you build uh, with this. And uh, it was, I think, early last year that I really started to work on, on ZEOS. I was, I was, diving into the, to the Zcash code base. I was looking into some protocols uh, that were already built on Ethereum based on zero knowledge. And yeah, I think it was then uh, last year, um, around this time now, uh, pretty much one year ago, where I announced uh, the project more or less uh, in the POS Telegram channel. And I did some evaluation and all that. And I was pretty much sure that I could build this on EOS, yeah, uh, using actually the liquid dApps technology, yeah, which we might come to a little later, but yeah, that's pretty much the background of the project. The first thing uh, I want uh, that the audience uh, understand, uh, it's why exactly uh, we need the EOS for the EOS mainnet, because it's for the EOS mainnet or have you other blockchains in mind? I think certainly for EOS, the mainnet uh, as first. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, My focus is definitely on, on EOS. Uh, you know, there are other EOS IO chains and those are probably the only chains where I could even build this on, I guess. Uh, basically, you know, the way I, I see all this, yeah. Um, so blockchain is a very new technology, right? And, um, you know, we needed the transparency on the base layer, right? Uh, like to really get trust into this new technology, we needed to see that it works. We needed to see that it's not hackable, right? So Bitcoin is now live for, what is it, 14 years or something. 
and it works, right? So we can see the tech is, is, uh, is stable and it works. It is really censorship resistance. And, um, but I, I think, you know, since it's all about finance, right? I mean, money is still the, the killer application of blockchain. And I would not only say money, I would say like really decentralized finance in general, all these protocols that we can build on top of, of our, you know, new crypto money. Those are all things um, that are related to finances, right? Uh, and like when it comes to finances, right? It's just the most natural thing that, that you kind of want some privacy, right? I mean, it's not only that, that everything is traceable, everything is recorded until the end of time, right? I mean, when we talk about blockchain. So uh, that means that not only can everyone watch you, but everyone can, once your, your address is linked or your EOS account is linked to your identity, everything is just traceable for the end of time, right? And, and linked to your identity. We have all these uh, blockchain analysis companies and all that, right? Chain analysis. So the current state of DeFi and, and like, Crypto is really, from a privacy point of view, it's a total nightmare, right? Uh, there is no privacy, except if you use privacy coins like Monero or so, but especially when we talk about smart contracts platforms like EOS or Solana. So basically, um, all smart contract blockchains are completely transparent, uh, no matter if EOS, Ethereum, Solana, you don't have privacy at all. Uh, and uh, yeah, why is EOS? Well, to have private user transactions, to, to make it, to enable users to completely transact privately and not only among each other, but also when using applications on EOS. So this is like the, something that you, that doesn't exist yet. And, and I think it's just a logical next step, right? Uh, because, and I also want to mention this, I, I brought it up in the white paper. This is something that isn't really broadly acknowledged by the crypto community yet, but the same way crypto gives us for the first time ever, like putting us in charge of our own money and, you know, removing the middleman, giving us direct access to financial markets now. The same way uh, also crypto for the first time ever enables true privacy because in traditional finance, you always need a, a broker or someone to access the financial markets. You always have this middleman, but in crypto, this middleman doesn't exist anymore. So that means for the first time ever, you can have really true privacy. You can really, right? Because you can interact with the markets. If no one can, if you don't need a middleman to access the markets, then you are really for the first time ever truly private. And this is another big, big benefit, uh, big potential benefit of, of blockchain and DeFi. How is it possible to have private transaction on a blockchain that is public and permissionless, like uh, the EOS mainnet, this settlement layer. And if it is uh, possible to have private transaction on this blockchain, that would be very, very uh, uh, something, uh, I would say, uh, very good, because we have a yield plus uh, coming, and it is uh, on top of the EOS mainnet. We have also the trust EVM network and ZEOS into the landscape will be will be nice. Uh, but maybe just to have an idea with this uh, zero knowledge proof, and uh, we speak also about uh, Z snarks, uh, all this, uh, the, this uh, voc voc vocabulary. But before that, before to go into the vocabulary, how is, how is it possible, even possible, to have private transaction on this public uh, blockchain that is uh, the EOS mainnet, the settlement layer? Right. So, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, first of all, you mentioned the term public blockchain. Um, like, when you look at to the privacy space, like at privacy coins like Monero or Pirate Chain, Zcash, whatever, those are all public blockchains. The difference is EOS is not only a public blockchain, EOS is also a transparent blockchain, right? It has a transparent base layer. Whereas for instance, Monero is also a public blockchain. That means anyone can just join the network with their own nodes, but it's not transparent on the base layer. It's encrypted or like, you know, 
Yeah, you could say in encrypted, yeah, because all the data that ends up on the blockchain is publicly verifiable, but it's not really readable, right? It's really just encrypted stuff, completely useless for, for the observer um, to trace transactions, uh, but, you know, it's still publicly verifiable, and that's the magic of, of all this, right? And does ZK Snarks work in the same way? You can hide user information and, uh, you know, generate these zero knowledge proofs, uh, which you can then, you know, send to the blockchain basically and have the blockchain node verify this. Um, blockchain like EOS, which is a general purpose blockchain, right? So you can basically build any application on top of it. You can just take an application like Monero or Zcash and build it on top of EOS because it's a general purpose blockchain. It is a public blockchain, it is also a transparent blockchain, but in case of Zeos, the data that is submitted, the transaction data that users send to the blockchain is as encrypted as on Monero or Zcash, right? It's like you still have a transparent blockchain, but the data that in case of Zeos that ends up on the blockchain is all encrypted, like the same way like on Monero. So the important thing to understand here is Z uh, EOS uh, as well as Ethereum and you know these smart contract blockchains those are blockchains that are designed so that other people can build applications on top of it so that they don't have to build their own blockchain network right but when you compare it to to other privacy coins like Monero or Zcash they are all built on their very own blockchain so that's the whole uh, magic. How can you have private transactions on EOS, which is a transparent blockchain? That was your question, right? Well, you just build an application on top of it that you know uses zero knowledge proof technology, for instance, to have only encrypted data uh, sent to the blockchain, but have it publicly verifiable. What is zero knowledge proof? Zero knowledge proofs allow you to allow any person to prove knowledge of certain information and even, uh, you know, you can express certain relationships between different parts of the information. So you can enforce certain constraints on, on this information. And any person, you know, can prove to the public that they are in possession of some secret information without revealing the information. It's, it's all about mathematics. mathematics. Okay. Exactly. So okay. um, the way zero knowledge proofs work, it's, it's really just pure mathematics. You can prove knowledge of a certain data yeah. um, that, that you are in possession of certain information that make a certain statement hold, a certain mathematical expression. Okay, um, so it's mathematical proof. Uh, it's really voilà. just mathematics. And it's also not really new. It's actually pretty, like, I don't know, 50, 60 years old. But the thing is, uh, there were no really applications for that back then. And this whole zero knowledge, uh, like, area, um, it, you know, had a total revival over the last years, thanks to blockchain. Because blockchain, for the first time, um, provided a really nice application for these zero knowledge proofs, and it's in my opinion. And I, you know, I, I, I told you I'm following the crypt, uh, the privacy space for quite a while already, and I looked in in different technologies. And what I found is that zero knowledge proofs uh, are just uh, the most flexible and most elegant way uh, to hide data, like to hide private personal data on a public blockchain. Voila. Other Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we have demystified already one word, zero knowledge proof. Yeah. Mathematical concept that you are using into your ZEOS framework solution uh, when you have to render the transactions private. Pretty much, yeah. And proof, prove that the transactions are, are really uh, private, I will say. It is being used in such a way that users can prove that they really made a valid transaction. For instance, that they didn't spend more of the balance that they actually own. No one knows their balance, but they can prove to the public that the transaction that they made is valid 
without revealing, you know, hey, here I, I sent like five zeros and I had 10 in my balance, so it's, it's valid. No, that information is all hidden, but it's still publicly verifiable that the user really did a, a valid transaction. Okay. ZK Snark. So ZK Snark is still um, just mathematics. It is um, again a, a, a certain type of zero knowledge proof with certain properties. A subset so, of uh, yes, a subset. Yeah, the zero knowledge, the zero knowledge proof uh, space is pretty big. So there are different proving systems over different elliptic curves and all that. I'm not a total expert on this, you know, by any means. Yeah, I'm really just an engineer. This is a super mathematical cryptography uh, topic. So I have a, you know, a basic understanding of, of all this. But, you know, you can work with these things without really understanding every Voila. little detail about the mathematics. It's comparable, you know, to be able to, to drive a car without really knowing how everything of a car works. Is there an API for that? Well, uh, the Zcash uh, team, they, they have a great team of cryptographers and developers and they are spearheading the, the whole innovation in the, in the ZK Snark blockchain space, basically. And they provided some, a, a great open source code base, not just for one proving system, but different proving systems that they used over, you know, over the last years in, in Zcash themselves. Those proving systems are highly optimized for use in blockchain applications. So, you know, if you if you do some research on it, you will quickly find that that this is the way to go if you if you want to enable private transactions on on a blockchain. Are you, you using know, the API? Are you using the API? I use exactly. I use um, exactly there. It's not not just an API. It's an entire open source code base. Yeah. So I basically ported the whole Zcash application which is an entire, you know, standalone blockchain application, I ported this into an EOS smart contract. So I threw away the whole blockchain logic and, you know, modified the application to the extent that it supports multiple token symbols of different uh, token contracts and even different token types. Because okay. the original Zcash application, right, only has this one native uh, fungible Zcash token and that's all. But on yeah, EOS, sure. we have different assets, right, from different token contracts and even NFTs and all that. So I modified the Zcash application to the extent that it supports all these different token types as well and have it executed within an EOS smart contract. All clear. All clear. Crystal clear. So now the question is, how a transaction, Zeos transaction works from a client, let's say from a wallet, for example, or whatever client application, if we consider that a wallet is also a client, and until that it is on chain, and in this case on the EOS mainnet, private, uh, going through Z ZEOS, that is that has no blockchain. The EOS is a is a protocol. We can say that you develop on top of uh, of EOS to render the underlying blockchain. In this case, the EOS mainnet secure, private for the transaction. You decide to render private. So let's say Patrick Nova Crypto. Now I want to send some uh, EOS to someone and I want to use your protocol. So how, what are the steps from the okay, client? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. So I will just go over the process, how it will look like from a user perspective, right? Exactly. Okay. So you have your tokens in your EOS account, right? That is how it is actually is. It's all tra transparent. Everyone can watch your EOS account on the EOS blockchain. So let's say as you, what you just mentioned, let's say you want to send some EOS privately uh, to a friend or whatever. So the way it works is um, you have your transparent EOS accounts on the EOS blockchain and Zeos will introduce, uh, yeah, the as the Zclash application, right? It introduces its own keys and addresses. So you can just create a, a Zcash wallet 
basically, or in this case, Zero's wallet, which is exactly the same. Um, so, for instance, if you are a Zcash holder, you can just use your Zcash privately for EOS, uh, for, for Zeos, right? You can use the exact same wallet that you used on Zcash. You could use the exact same private key for Zeos because it's the exact same application. And so first, first, I need a particular wallet. Correct. You need to create a Zeos wallet. And you are providing those, those, those wallets? Exactly. It, it will be um, very simple. Like, uh, you you know, I guess a lot of, of people who are watching this um, may, might be familiar with legacy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And if you remember, you know, how easy it is to create a, a paper wallet or something, you can really just create it by a click of a button and then you have a new random private key, with, you know, with, a, with an address and all that. And then you can send cryptos to that wallet, right? And that's basically it. And the exact same way it's going to work with Zero. So in contrast to EOS, right, where you have to create the EOS account, which you need to pay some RAM for because it lives in EOS RAM, right, that is a little bit different from legacy cryptocurrencies. Zeos wallets are going to be as simple as uh, legacy cryptocurrency wallets. Really, you can create them just by the click of a button. And once you have this, uh, this private uh, Zeos wallet, you can basically move all your assets from your EOS account into that private Zeos wallet. How does that look like on the blockchain? Because uh, you might wonder, huh, um, well, all these tokens are somehow in my wallet, right? They are transparent. How can they become somehow private all of a sudden? So how this works is um, if you send them into your EOS wallet, basically, what happens on the blockchain is the assets that you want to move into your private uh, Zeos wallet will actually move into custody of the Zeos token contract. And at the same time, you get some private UTXOs issued into your Zeos wallet, which are just, um, you know, like private representations of your assets. With the Zeos um, world, we have a new kind of uh, account addressing wallet. system. Nothing to do with the EOS uh, account addressing system. Here we are in Zeos. And you send some ZEOS with your ZEOS uh, wallet. You say directly ZEOS to the EOS mainnet. You send the ZEOS to a ZEOS smart contract that is developed on, on a EOS IO smart contract, C. And this smart contract ZEOS is on the EOS mainnet. Correct. So when this smart contract see a new uh, transaction coming, what do you do? So what is the purpose of the of the Zeos token contract? If you want to privatize or anonymize your EOS assets from your transparent EOS token uh, from your transparent EOS account, what you do is uh, you send them to the Zeos token contract, which will keep those assets into custody, and it will issue private UTXOs, which are private representations of those assets, into your Zeos wallet. So in your EOS account, you always have the real tokens, right? In your Zeos wallet, you only have private representations of these tokens, okay? It's, it just exists virtually, basically, as a second, you know, universe next to the real EOS blockchain, basically. Yeah? You have this virtual system of, of Zeos wallets on top of it, but it's really just virtual because the tokens are always traceable, inside the Zeos token contract because the Zeos token contracts holds all these assets. But, you know, this is all that, that an observer can see. No one can really trace absolutely, ownership absolutely. anymore. Yeah. So the ZEOS yeah. smart contract is holding those particular ZEOS token? All the assets that are being held by users in private Zeos wallets are in reality in custody of the Zeos token contract. In custody right. of the ZEOS smart contract. And the, the ZDO smart contract do, do also the mapping uh, between a ZDOS address and the, for example, your EOS account? No, this is the magic of zero knowledge proof. There is no mapping between addresses. So your, your ZDOS address, 
you can use it completely independently from any EOS account, uh, from any EOS account. You also can, you know, transfer assets from several different EOS accounts into the same EOS address, and you can also send it back to different EOS accounts. So they are not bound to each other in any way. In fact, at no time does the protocol expose any EOS addresses to the public. This is always hidden through the zero, zero knowledge proofs. I think for the user, what is important is uh, here that how do the assets become untraceable? Well, that happens uh, by really just having them all in custody of the Zeus token contract and the users will only transact with private representations of those assets. Okay. When you, so when you have the private representations of, of your assets, right, that you just move from your EOS account into, the, into your private Zeus wallet, basically to the Zeus token contract, but then you get issued those private UTXOs, you can exchange those private UTXOs, you know, among other Zeus wallets completely privately um, and untraceably in the same way that you can uh, transact among transparent EOS accounts. Right? Okay. You can divide, yeah, you can divide um, your, you, let's say you have, as you just said, uh, to, to stick to the example, you have five EOS that you just made uh, private basically. And now you have uh, just a five UTXO or five EOS UTXO representation. And you can just send three EOS privately to, to one EOS address and two EOS, uh, two EOS to another address. So you can split the UTXO the same way it works on legacy cryptocurrencies, right? And um, when you transact, right? And, and uh, the receiver uh, receives like, let's say three EOS of this five EOS UTXO. He can just cash out uh, to his EOS account uh, in the very same way that you that you made those EOS private. You can go the other way. You can burn this UTXO that represents three EOS, and then the EOS uh, the the EOS token contract will uh, release three EOS from custody and send it back to the transparent EOS account of your choice. If you want to know more in the workflow that mentioned Matthias you can go into the white paper around page uh, 17, correct? Correct. Page 17, and there you, you will be into the core of the, of the workflow, I would say. Uh, maybe just something we, I, I want to, to ask you, Matthias. Um, you you spoke uh, you stated that the ZDO smart contract is holding the funds uh, is uh, in custody and I just uh, ask me myself about the security of this uh, smart contract because <laughs> that's very important to render the transaction private but that's also very important that the smart contract uh, the ZDO smart contract is also uh, let's say secure, very secure. So, what are the the measures that you are uh, using to 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 have a ZDO smart contract uh, secure? Or are we speaking only of once one e one ZDO smart contract, or are they maybe others? Uh, but the question remain: Have you rendered that? Um, uh, about the about the security about this ZDO yeah. smart contract. Right. Yeah, that's a great question. Right. Um, so uh, first of all, you ask about the number of smart contracts for the private transaction part of all this. Uh, it's really just the ZDO's token contract. The whole ecosystem will be much bigger than just private transactions. You know, there will be an exchange and all that, which will be my demo application for the for the authentication token and all that. So there will be several smart contracts. I think it's going to be around five um, at the end, and they will. And you are asking about the ownership, basically, right? Um, yeah. So the way you can do it on on EOS, uh, which was, or you know, if if you want to decentralize your the ownership of your smart contract, you can just hand the permission, the ownership permission to the VPs. 
But this is not the way uh, we're going to do that with zeros um, because there is a lot of governance that is um, required for the you know, protocol, but also the other applications. And one thing I'm super excited about and uh, what I want to spin up as soon as possible is a fractal uh, for zeros. And then having uh, ownership transferred to the fractal, yeah? So the fractal will have a, will be like, have a DAO structure, right? Um, how this is gonna look like in detail is yet to be determined, yeah? So we are very early in all this, but I'm super um, excited about this whole fractally uh, or fractal governance, uh, um, you know, way of, um, yeah, uh, having like ownership. Distribute the ownership. Yeah. Truly decentralized, right? How do you really hand that to the community? So there, there were other DAO structures uh, in the past, um, you, usually based on some kind of token-weighted voting. Uh, like, you know, I, I, I was part of the Vigor duck for, for some time and I, I got some experience, you know, from there. But, you know, it never really convinced me, right? And then uh, Dan Larimer came up with this whole uh, fractal uh, democracy stuff and you know, that seemed to be a, a good way to go to truly, you know, to have a, to have something that doesn't not uh, move towards centralization over time, but really keeps its uh, decentralized um, nature. And yeah, long story short, so uh, that is what I want to set up at the very beginning, also to be able to have more community members involved, like with more, you know, incentivized and all that. And uh, the idea is to have like ownership of all the smart contracts that will be related to the Zeus ecosystem will all be governed and owned by the Zeus DAO or the Zeus Fractal. Voila. So you need a governance uh, around your smart contract uh, for sure and with the Fractal uh, paradigm that we are living since uh, January, February with Daniel Larimer, shout out to him and also to Dancing Joy that I have into this uh, workshop with Felix Ruiz for the Eden Fractal update uh, into this workshop number 15. So it's clear we have a lot of developers like you uh, that are developing uh, a, a, a some uh, solutions and when it comes to the smart contract and ownership and uh, of the funds and to be the most decentralized possible or distributed possible to be into a fractal uh, that make uh, very sense for uh, ZEOS. But you are creating the tech, then comes the governance aspect, the, the fractal aspect of the things. That's uh, very smart from you and uh, I love this uh, approach. So you are on Pomelo season three for Zedios and also with a new grant, fresh grant, uh, Web3, Named, Web3. But maybe let's speak first about your Pomelo grant uh, since season one, now season three, Zedios. And from season one until season two, uh, you have made uh, different uh, unit testing, different programming, uh, different uh, uh, technology stack and also a verifier for the for the proofs and, and now on season three you are make, doing some edits to your uh, existing verifier uh, that's a part of your uh, season three but this is more than that so what are you rendering as a public into your solution because the goal of Pomelo is always find new building blocks, new component that we can render public open source for the community. So what what, what component in ZDOS can be rendered public for the community? Um, right. So uh, the, the, the current grant application is about um, upgrading the already existing verifier for the growth fixing proving system to support uh, the new Halo 2 proving system that the 
Zcash uh, developers just recently released uh, or just recently rolled out basically on the on the Zcash mainnet and made it the new standard for their private transactions. It comes with a lot of benefits over the, the previous uh, proving system, Bro 16, in a sense that uh, you don't need a trusted setup anymore to create the, the ZK snark parameters. That was one of the biggest, uh, you know, critic uh, or critic points or about about the growth fixing proving system that you have to have this trusted cer cer uh, ceremony, you know, um, where a certain group of, of people uh, col um, collaborate to create these ZK snark parameters. The problem is if all these people would collude, uh, then the setup could get compromised. They could create fake proofs and all that. Without going too much into all the technical details around the trusted setup, this was a big uh, a big issue with with zero knowledge proofs up to this point. Um, with the new proving system that I now already rolled out on the Kylan testnet uh, with the new verifier, you can create uh, z um, privacy applications based on zk snarks without this trusted setup. Another big advantage is uh, about this new proving system that you can have recursive proof verification. So you can bundle multiple zero knowledge proofs into one. For everyone who, who, who checked out the white paper, uh, I, uh, I present some use cases where you have three or even more zero knowledge proofs in one transaction. With this new proving system, we can compress all this into one proof. So this is important for scalability and all that. So, um, it's a very, very cool technology. And yeah, that is mainly what the grant application is about, uh, bringing this new zero knowledge proof technology to EOS. And I want to also want to note that I already delivered on almost all of it. Uh, so like the, the whole Halo 2 verifier is already rolled out on the kind of test and it works uh, and I will deploy that on the mainnet very soon. Yeah, um, there are certain things that I you know, need to be accomplished before that's possible. It's also the reason why the, the season one verifier is not yet available on the mainnet, but this will all come in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, you know, we are now moving towards mainnet with everything. You have another fresh uh, Pomelo season three started. Uh, new grant, Named Web3, what it is. Um, but it is a separate project, yeah? Uh, and this is also why there's a separate grant application. Uh, the, you know, I tried to onboard some more devs. I tried to get more funding for the ideas I, I want to build to get more people involved. And yeah, so the, the, the whole Web3 grant is a, is a, a project on its own, but it's related to, to Zios or to the privacy stuff. I will explain a little bit more on that. What it actually is, yeah, it is about uh, creating a true Web3 infrastructure for applications on EOS. The big problem that decentralized applications have today, or the, the way that almost all of these applications uh, work, is the you know the back end of the application is living on the blockchain and is decentralized and censorship resistant. But the all applications that you see today in the crypto space, they rely on a centralized web service to deliver the front end to the user, right? So if you're, for instance, if you look to Vigor, you go to app.vigor.ai, right? Um, or any other application like New Nudex or DeFi Box, it doesn't matter. You always have a centralized web service that is delivering the front end to the user. And what we just saw this week, uh, uh, what happened uh, with a very popular Ethereum application is the, namely Tornado Cash, the US government cracked down on that project and took down not only the GitHub of the of the project, but also the entire front end. So skilled users, they may still be uh, able to use the application because it, the actual application lives on Ethereum, right? It's still there. But most of the users, you know, if the website is not there or if the front end is taken down, they don't know how to interact with the application, right? The idea is that you have your front end stored in decentralized storage, for instance, liquid storage or other things are, are, might be possible as well, like BitTorrent or, or whatever. 
uh, instead oh, of a service of the DAP network, Name the liquid storage, yeah? Correct, mm -hmm. yeah. This is, uh, that, that will be our first uh, solution that we're going to use because it's already there, right? And it ties perfectly in into EOS. So, um, and you have your, it will provide a, a service for people to host their application in descent, like the front end application in decentralized storage, having a, a little browser application that basically fetches the front end application from decentralized storage and renders it locally in the browser uh, without having to rely on any uh, centralized infrastructure, traditional web infrastructure. It also comes with a with an with our own DNS uh, system that is built on top of EOS, which basically allows to map IPFS yes. hashes of your front end application to your EOS account name. So it is a it will be a complete infrastructure for applications that is independent from uh, traditional centralized web services and traditional DNS. We say liquid storage, but what it is exactly? Right. So that's exactly right. Um, the solutions that I saw, they use, they utilize EOS, like really on-chain RAM to store the website data, which is incredibly expensive, you know, because I think a kilobyte of RAM is around uh, 17 cents or so at the moment, uh, around that. Um, so if you have a, a web application that, like the Zios uh, web application, you know, um, there is a lot of uh, stuff that is included in the front end to create all these zero knowledge proofs. So there's a lot of dependencies for elliptic curve cryptography. Long story short, the whole uh, Zios front end is like several megabytes. If I would want to store that on EOS RAM, I would have to pay, I don't know, thousands of dollars or something, right? Just for the storage on EOS RAM. This is why we are using liquid storage. Uh, you know, which is off-chain storage, uh, which people might ask, yeah, but how is this trustless, right? And the key is that we use IPFS uh, as an addressing system. And the way IPFS works is uh, that, you know, it, and it guarantees data integrity because the, the address is basically a, a hash sum of the data that you, that you upload into decentralized storage. So there is no way that someone can tamper with the data without you noticing it. So the IPFS hash is stored on chain in the DNS table. It is being mapped to your EOS account name. So it, you know, to have the data really trustlessly stored in decentralized storage, all you need to do is uh, store this IPFS hash on chain. And, um, you know, there's no way that, that you can, that someone can, you know, tamper with the data in decentralized storage uh, because it would change the IPFS hash. Who is maintaining this liquid storage because it is off-chain? So who is right. maintaining that? So this is like a uh, like cloud storage uh, among the DSPs. So the DSPs, so the data the service DAP provider on, on, on uh, the DAP network, so on liquid apps. Yeah. So you, you, have, you, you need to have DSPs. Correct. Like uh, like for for all uh, services of the of the DAP network, you have these uh, DAP service providers, which are special EOS nodes. Into the DAP network with leak, the service liquid storage that is off chain uh, storage uh, that has to be maintained by the DSPs, uh, data service provider. So. How many DSPs uh, have uh, we currently into the DAP network? So I remember in 2019 when we were, uh, I was uh, following uh, the Liquid Apps DAP network. Uh, that was always the, the concern also that if we want to deliver liquid storage, we need also to have the DSPs. So where are we currently with that in 2022 with the DSPs? Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a critical question, right? Um, because uh, unfortunately with, with all the, like yeah, the big EOS tragedy over the last years where basically the whole ecosystem slowly died off, uh, the DAP network uh, 
you know, uh, had a similar um, journey, I would say. Um, so unfortunately, um, there are not that many DSPs left on the on the mainnet. I think as of now, uh, Michael from EOS USA just uh, spun up his, his DSP again. So I think we have around three DSPs on the mainnet. I will add one more uh, soon. And then we only have four, which is not that much, I understand. But, um, you know, we are, we are just in the process of reviving the whole ecosystem back. And I'm, I have a lot of confidence that if EOS really will have this big comeback, then, then I have no doubt that the DAP network as the, really the best scaling solution, you know, for EOS will also have a similar comeback. And in a, maybe I, I, I just um, add that real quick. Uh, so for, for Zios, we, we built uh, an additional incentive structure for DSP. So if you want to run a DSP and, uh, you know, support the Zios project, then you will have an additional income uh, to, to the DAP tokenomics. Because right now it is not really profitable to, to run a DSP. Um, you know, I, I cannot name any numbers here right now, but... As far as I know, it, it doesn't look so good right now, but you know, with, uh, with the additional incentive structure that we provide with uh, Zios, it will be profitable to run a DSP. And I, I hope that, you know, that way we, we will uh, incentivize more people to run nodes. And I hope that maybe by the end of next year, we might bring up that number to maybe 10 to 50 nodes or so. That would be great. But yeah, we will see. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, the technology stack with the liquid app network is a very good approach. I am very a fan of the, the DAP network since uh, 2019. Uh, I remember also discussing with uh, Benny Akak and uh, Tal Muskel and uh, Zach Gohl when he was uh, formerly a community manager for the DAP network. Uh, the technology is there. The, 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 that's very superior stack, and also that's abstract the, the, the code. That's make the cost lower. Uh, we don't use uh, too much RAM. We are uh, going with the DSPs, and it's clear. Uh, if EOS is going better, the ecosystem is going better, all will grow. And also we have to collaborate between us. Uh, that's the point with this workshop also. It's uh, building a collaborative culture on EOS, around EOS, and including the DAP network as a, uh, as a stack on top of the EOS mainnet, uh, using this stack to be totally abstract, uh, to be multi-chain, to be uh, IBC, to be, uh, yeah, uh, we have made a little bit uh, the liquid app, uh, liquid apps app network uh, on the on the side of the road, and you have uh, we have uh, here uh, Matthias Schönberg that is developing Zedios and using the liquid app services like liquid storage and other services. So I think it's uh, it's uh, great to see. And um, I think we can dive more today, but that's, that will necessitate a ton of uh, discussion. Uh, that was a great discussion with you, Matthias. We can dive more for sure. But for a first interview together into a Neo Sayo Swiss workshop, I think we did a good breakdown in the video description uh, the audience will find all the links about your Pomelo Grant, ZDOS, your Pomelo Grant, Web3, your white paper on ZDOS. Uh, all is very well crafted, very well explained. There are uh, workflows, graphics, all into the white paper, page 17 around the, the workflow that we describe as, uh, uh, let's say, vocal. Uh, but um, if you want to, to understand more, you go there into the white paper. And what you are hitting is very uh, needed. Um, and um, yeah, 
and I want to, I want to mention that you were also interviewed by Felix Ruiz and uh, Dan Sinjoy that are also into this workshop about Eden Fractal. You are also yourself uh, attending the Eden Fractal on the Wednesday, 13 UTC. Each Wednesday, 13 UTC, there is the Eden Fractal. I will try to, to come also uh, into those uh, Eden Fractal um, meetings. Um, that's very uh, the place to go where the people are uh, contributing and uh, showcasing what they have done, like you. You, you can showcase what you have done. You are also a developer into this Eden Fractal and you take in consideration the, the fractal way to do the things. So I think with all that said, uh, we can uh, finish on something always fun. And uh, that will be, I will say, go. Um, I will say go ZDOS at three, two, one, zero. Okay, so three, two, one, zero. Go ZDOS. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you and, so much, Patrick. Uh, and fun. thank you so much, Matthias, for the time that went into this video uh, breakdown. And uh, I hope you will enjoy. And uh, we will see us again uh, soon, for sure. Thank you. For sure, yeah. Thank you very much, Patrick. And go yours. Go yours, yes. Go yours. <laughs>